Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the Marvel Select Carnage figure. This figure came out about a month and a half ago at the time of this recording, and this figure is probably the most anticipated release from Marvel Select that I've had this year. After getting their Venom figure with all the great accessories and amazing detail, I was very, very curious to see what they were going to do with another symbiote character. And I honestly think they've raised the bar even further with this Carnage figure. And of course, if you did Venom, Carnage is the next logical step as far as a symbiote character. So definitely a good choice on Diamond Select's part to go this route. So let's get a closer look at Carnage here. First off with Carnage, the sculpting is top notch. This particular head they've given us is really brutal looking, really menacing. Now, I do enjoy Marvel characters, and I enjoy a lot of the more modern movies that suck a lot less than the previous ones, but my comic reading is pretty limited. I do read some Marvel stuff, but not a lot, so I really can't tell you what version of Carnage this head sculpt's based off of, what artist or anything like that, but they've done a spectacular job. I love all the lines running through it. I love that the teeth are just kind of part of the symbiote structure there. They have no real different paint coloration to them, but they still look very menacing and gross. You see all the kind of holes through his mouth as it stretches out. Tongue in there, very gross looking. But I think my favorite part are the eyes. They have a very dark black outline. You can even see it kind of intrudes into the eye itself in there. But the paint on it, instead of just being a flat white like Venom had, it's actually a pearlescent white, which just really makes it look that much more creepy. And especially with the matte coloration of the rest of the figure, and there's a slight gloss to it just for it being plastic. But it's not a very shiny paint on the rest of the figure, but these eyes have a very nice reflective quality to them in the right light. They come around the back, reaching very far back there. But we do get two other heads with Carnage. We get the unmasked Cletus Cassidy head, which isn't really unmasked, more of just revealing. We had a similar head with Eddie Brock with the Venom figure, but this I really like. The Eddie Brock was like capturing a scene out of a comic where you could tell it was a moment that would have lasted half a second and we're just capturing it in figure form. This is much more something you could actually imagine the character staying as for a scene or something. Just with the symbiote kind of pulling away or enveloping his head. I love the demented look they gave him because I believe this character is supposed to be a psycho killer so it definitely is a look of a psychopath. Very dirty face as well. It is kind of weird they made his hair, his red hair is the exact same color, the blood red that we get. With the Carnage symbiote kind of crawling over, you can see there's a little darker areas around the hairline, but his eyebrows are very, very bright. But I do love how it comes around his mouth there, coming around the back of the head. We have this one big-ass tendril coming from the back. Just a very, very cool-looking head sculpt. And I think it actually is a better done one than the Eddie Brock. And then probably my favorite head sculpt of the bunch, this one is the one I kind of feel is the most iconically Carnage. Same pearlescent white eyes on there, but this has that black mouth making the teeth much more visible. And then kind of a downside to it is just that it's pink in between the teeth. There's no cutout area. Now, not knowing as much about the character, maybe that is something from the comics because obviously they did take the time to cut out the mouth on this head. So there may be a reason, I guess, why it's just pink in there, but it still looks very cool, very comic book accurate, and just amazingly detailed. The rest of the body continues that great sculpt. Everywhere on it, it looks like the symbiote is just kind of wrapping itself around the body. No area on this body is really all that smooth. And the blacks and reds feel like they're layered as far as the sculpt goes, and the paint works very well, blending them together. The red always kind of has a slight shading of black to it, and the black is very broken up and splotchy, just like it would be in the comics. The musculature sculpt on here is also very cool looking. A very neat anatomical sculpt to it that really isn't broken up too badly by any of the articulation points, which I think is cool. The arms are really well done, continuing that sculpt on there, looking almost like bear muscles without the skin in some sections, which is a really cool effect. And then we get his hands, these beautifully done hands that are very sinister looking. They're very large and we have the individually sculpted fingernails on there that look incredibly sharp and sinister. And then we get these bladed pieces. We have one on the thumb here and then two large, almost Wolverine-esque claws. You can see the symbiote even kind of traveling down them a bit. 
On his other hand, it's a little different. We have a longer piece there on the thumb sticking way far out. These actually are more on the fingers instead of coming out of the knuckles, like on his right side. We get them coming off the fingers more Freddy Krueger-esque, which definitely is up my alley. But these hands are removable. Then we have two different weapons we can attach. Here we have an axe-shaped blade. Very, very cool looking. Fits in well with the rest of the sculpt and looking very sinister. I know this is an iconic Carnage weapon here. And then we have a spear, which I think is really nice looking as well. Very cool shape, kind of almost looks like a tribal tattoo or something, but very, very nice. These seem like you could put them on either side. I don't really feel like they work better on any one side or the other. So you could switch them up however you feel necessary and make Carnage look however demented you want them to. Going down the rest of the body, the legs have the same great sculpt to them. Very nice layers of the different symbiote sections. Coming down to the feet, which have a very classic superhero look to them. You even see the wrinkles by the toes. But there are kind of symbiote veins going through. Now these might be reused off another figure or something, but it's not that big of a deal. They work really well with Carnage here. Come around the back, more of that same great detail. The only thing you'll notice is that the sculpt is broken up a bit by some peg holes. That's because there are more accessories to go with this Carnage figure. We get a wide array of different little tendrils we get attached to Carnage. We have four different kind of straight tendrils. They're all pretty similar in sculpt and paint. These are made of a flexible material. You can see it's kind of a middle core with the symbiote strands wrapping around it. We also get the ones that I prefer, the more curly ones that just kind of go off in random directions. These two looking very cool. And we get three little smaller ones, which have some nice detail to them as well. And then you're able to install them wherever you want on the figure. There's several different ports. We have one on each forearm you could plug into. We have three on the back. You can see I've left one open here and we have two coming off here. And we have one on his right shoulder. Now the problem is I feel like we could have really used one more of these kind of curly ones because it would have fit in perfectly there. Adding in one of the straight pieces, I also feel looks a little weird. And it's kind of hard to place in a way that I feel looks very good on the figure. It also just kind of sticks up way too much. No matter where you put it, the angle is just kind of odd. So it's going to be sticking straight up from... A place where it doesn't really feel like it should be. For articulation, they've actually improved on the Venom figure. This figure has a nice ball joint at the neck, so he looks pretty far up and down. You can turn him side to side, of course, tilt his head. Not very limited. I kind of wish he could look up a bit more, just limited by the way the head is sculpted. But not bad at all. The pin socket shoulder will go forward and back. Also go out to the side. Won't go out too far, but a decent amount. You can rotate up the bicep. We get a single joint at the elbow, but still has a decent range. We can swivel at the wrists, and a new feature for this figure is actually a hinge at the wrist, which is very nice, an improvement over Venom. Here at the mid-torso, he has a ball joint, so you can move him all different ways. Really freely, sculpt of the torso is done in a way that I think it hides that articulation pretty well, and it doesn't really hinder it much at all either. You can even tilt side to side there. We have a cut joint at the waist, you can swivel. At the hips, we kind of have the standard joint we get with these more articulated Marvel Select figures. They can move forward and back pretty easily, not too far back. They also move out to the side really well. We have a mid-thigh cut. We have a double-jointed knee, which is really nice. You can bend at the ankle, and it also has an ankle rocker, which is an improvement as well over Venom. And here we have Carnage next to two other of the modern symbiotes given to us from Marvel Select. On the left, we have the Anti-Venom, and on the right, we have Venom. And I have heard some complaints saying that Carnage shouldn't be as large as Venom, and he's definitely the same size. Not quite as bulky throughout the upper torso. Venom has a much beefier chest, and his whole arms are much larger. But the legs are pretty similar, and the heads are roughly the same size as well. So... Carnage is still a pretty tall character. And seeing these two newer figures kind of makes me wish that they hadn't done Anti-Venom when they did because it would be really great to get that character in an updated, articulated, crazy version like these guys. But also has me wondering what Marvel Select's next symbiote might be. I feel like this has been very successful. I know when Carnage first came out, he sold out at every comic shop around me, and I don't think I was alone in that. So I really wouldn't be surprised if we end up with a toxin or something next year. And here's Carnage next to some Marvel Legend figures. On the left, we have Hasbro's recent Spider-Man release. And on the right, we have their Walgreens exclusive Agent Venom. And Carnage is definitely way too big to really play with these guys. But if you were doing a photo shoot or something, you can kind of fudge the scale 
and make it work with a little forced perspective. And I'm sure somebody will point out Agent Venom is a Marvel Select figure as well, but being a Disney Store exclusive, I never actually got my hands on that version of him, and I kind of hope we'll get a re-release eventually because I'd love to pick up that version of that character. And overall, I really, really enjoy this Carnage figure. When that Venom figure came out, I was blown away by it. The amount of accessories and attention to detail Marvel Select gave it and I feel like they've stepped it up with Carnage. All the tendrils that you can add or take away really give a unique touch to the figure. The two different hand sculpts are very, very cool, and the three different heads are fantastic. The articulation's been stepped up since Venom, and overall I just feel like it is actually a superior figure. So this figure gets a very high recommend, and I'm very curious to see if this one will also make my best of the year, because it's definitely a contender. There'll have to be some really amazing other releases from other companies to keep this guy out of that list. Now, as I mentioned earlier, when Carnage first came out, he was pretty hard to get your hands on, at least for me. I went to all three comic shops in my area the day of his release, and nobody had him. Everybody had gotten two in, and they'd sold out very quickly. But he looks like he is coming back in stock. I've seen him online at Amazon, and even my local FYE stores have started getting him in. So if you haven't picked him up yet, you're not out of luck just yet. They're definitely reshipping this figure, and if Venom's any indication, they'll probably reship him a couple more times as well. I'm not a huge Marvel collector, but these symbiotes are so freaking cool that I just cannot help myself and I just want to pick them up. And even though Spider-Man is far from my favorite Marvel superhero, I'm in the hip with a lot of Spider-Man figures just to support these guys. So let me know in the comments below, if Marvel Select does another symbiote figure next year in the same style, who would you want it to be? I think my personal vote is for Toxin, assuming the Anti-Venom is probably off the table, seeing as the original figure of it's not too old. But honestly, any symbiote they put out, if it was in this style, with this great level of accessories and detail, I'll probably pick it up no matter who it is. Make sure to check me out on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also follow me on Facebook, link below. And until next time, so when we're Outside the Box Reviews, stay tuned for more to come.